Cyclone Mocha set to make a catastrophic landfall later today in Myanmar on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 14. Cyclone Mocha reached Category 5 status earlier on and is still holding that intensity as it continues to move towards the coast of Myanmar near the border with Bangladesh where it's expected to make landfall early this afternoon local time. We also have a new tropical storm that has formed in the South Indian Ocean the 18th of this year so far. It's 18 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins. There's not much active right now though, a little system there in the western gulf and some tornadic activity across Iowa right now at the time of publication. Here is the view across the western Pacific and Indian Ocean region. Obviously an extremely powerful storm in Cyclone Mocha right now. A dangerous catastrophic Category 5 that could inundate the coastline with at least uh, 15 to 20 feet of storm surge as well as a tropical storm which is yet to be named on the other side of the equator in the southern hemisphere southwest Indian Ocean it will move just south of Diego Garcia in a few days and could become a substantial tropical cyclone but it shouldn't affect any land areas Mocha of course is obviously the biggest threat and we'll be running live coverage on the storm later on this morning and at landfall Wind speeds are at least 160 miles per hour, an estimated pressure of 915 millibars. Satellite imagery looks like this and you can see Mocha quite clearly on this imagery taking up a large part of the Bay of Bengal, gradually moving northeastwards with a massive rain profile there, extreme rain rates inside the storm uh, and that will start to make itself really known in the later hours of this morning. Here's some satellite imagery looking first at the system on the southern side there. It's got good rotation and stronger winds will probably follow soon. And of course there's Cyclone Mocha unmistakable there on this imagery. And as we move towards the other infrared channel you can see just how beastly it's looking there from the Korean satellite there. Uh, looking really fascinating and obviously extremely dangerous. Looking back down south again the other system there does have a decent core of convection. Well here is a close up on Mocha right now and you can find more satellite imagery in real time on the Force 13 live automated tracker but take a look at the eye there extremely impressive not fully uh, deep at all times which is why we're sticking at 160 and possibly not more than that uh, but the convection around it is really um, substantial well into the minus 80s all around this storm uh, really really incredible the storm's intensity and well beyond what we were expecting and there's that other system quickly there in the south uh, indian ocean it is starting to look better there on that uh, infrared Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are also picking up, up to 32, 31 to 32 degrees off the coast of Mexico. Into the Atlantic, the loop current looking a little bit more stronger there, as is the Gulf Stream off the US East Coast and along the West Coast of Florida as well, getting those 26 degree isotherms building in there now. But in the uh, Caribbean off the coast of Cuba, it's looking really good. Indian Ocean, of course, where Mocha is right now, still extremely warm sea surface temperatures of 31 degrees all the way up to landfall. Those temperatures have actually increased a little bit towards the landfall zone, so it really is a worst case scenario right now. Southwest Indian Ocean, where that other cyclone is, temperatures are around 27 degrees Celsius. It might hit a slightly warmer pool a little bit later on. And in the Australian region, temperatures really dropping down quite a lot, as you can see across the board here. Um, only a few spots of 29 degrees now around the coast of Australia. South Pacific still got some decent warm areas over 30 degrees Celsius north of Vanuatu and Fiji. But of course, uh, systems uh, are quite hard to come by now at this late stage of the season. And the Western Pacific really bubbling and boiling uh, over 30 degrees Celsius over large parts of the Philippine Sea and the South China Sea. 
Sea surface temperature anomalies already a cool pool behind the track of Mocha, but ahead of it, it is still a little bit above average, so it's really working against us right now. Uh, Western Pacific also above average in the main Philippine Sea region, and in the Eastern Pacific, that El Nino effect looks like it's building in a li little bit more every time we look at this imagery, and off the coast of Mexico, it's a well above average in one or two spots. Oceanic heat content looks like this in the South Pacific, uh, still quite a bit to go around but it is starting to decrease a little bit. The main problem here is actually getting systems to form and in the Northern Hemisphere, Western Pacific really getting up there in the Philippine Sea to the west of Guam and look towards the Eastern Pacific, those really warm hot spots have disappeared a little bit but I'm sure they'll come back later on looking decent compared to what we usually see, especially last year. Here's Milka and we expect landfall will occur fairly soon. If we look at this model, it moves in there with a very punishing landfall. There's a very powerful storm, probably still a mid-range category four at least by the time it does so. And we're looking at the landfall time there, probably somewhere around a lunchtime now, according to that model run by the looks of things. They're uh, just trying to capture take a look at the timestamp on that but uh, it will be uh, the, the worst of the storm will definitely be felt by late morning and especially early afternoon south indian ocean here's this other system and eventually it does become a hurricane equivalent storm around about the 16th so that's two days from now and there it is reaching category two maybe category three as it continues southwestwards i'm not well versed on may storms in the indian ocean but it must have been a while since we've seen a category three in may anywhere in the southern hemisphere so that would certainly be a turn up for the books right there stalling a little bit but harmless out at sea uh, rainfall expectations then as Mocha moves inland and you can see there it hasn't changed very much the rainfall profile and some of it happens after the fact you can see those colors filling in late on there 18th 19th of May may not necessarily be associated with Mocha but we'll include it on our rain tallies here because even if it does happen after the storm it could still cause issues so we're looking at high amounts of rainfall there well above eight inches 200 millimeters for large parts of the region that it will be affecting near the landfall zone quite a bit higher 11 inches probably pushing 12 or more and over the mountains inland it could be locally quite a bit more than that up to 500 millimeters and that 11 inches there that's just nearly 300 millimeters near the landfall zone which we do expect will be very very close to the border between uh, Myanmar and Bangladesh probably um, I'm not quite sure yet could even be on the northern side of that border we're not sure just yet Western Pacific in the moderate range GFS is still throwing out a tropical cyclone it does become a substantial typhoon and this time it tracks north and northwest through the Mariana Islands possibly affecting Saipan there as a substantial typhoon uh, I think we should pay a little bit more attention to it now that it's entered the medium range, but we still haven't assigned any chances for this potential system yet in the Western Pacific, but sure sign here that it could be about to wake up again. And here's a continuation of that cyclone in the Indian Ocean. It veers off towards the east now on the uh, medium range GFS there and starts to weaken and eventually it just gets trapped there by the looks of things and turns westerly again and there it is just about dying off by the time we get to that 10 day period. Curiously, Mateo France on their forecast have this storm constantly moving southwestwards, quite a different track to what the GFS is painting here on this view. That's the serious stuff done with right now. Take a look at the Force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode there on the top right and all of our products will spring up to life on your screen. We also have our still waiting for Hone t-shirts for whenever that storm arrives. Well, in the silly range, this is day 10 through 16, the GFS goes absolutely bonkers with two other tropical cyclones that form in the Western Pacific, one off the western coast of the Philippines and another one out there over the uh, far 
reaches of the ocean and the first initial cyclone ends up moving through the Ryukyu Islands and into the East China Sea. So really a lot of activity going on there. Um, I think they are long odds to see three tropical cyclones form and be active simultaneously in May, but there we go. That's the GFS long range and we'll see what happens. You can talk about that and anything to do with the tropics. I'm sure it will mostly be about Mocha on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13. And an appeal from me, if you are an expert or in the area where Mocha will be affecting, please get in touch on our Discord server. We'll be doing a live stage on there where you'll be able to phone in and be on our live event later on today. On this day, though, on May 14th, 2007, we had Cyclone Akash, which was about to make landfall in a similar area area actually uh, pretty much over Cox's Bazaar this storm made landfall at as a category one to be honest with you that's probably what we hoped Mocha would do unfortunately it has gotten quite a lot worse than that but there it was a category one that made landfall on this day 15 16 years ago goodness me I can't count 16 years ago well, we are code red for obvious reasons, and it is an extremely severe situation. We can't emphasize that enough. In the Atlantic, the first name on the list there is Arlene, the Eastern Pacific, Adrian, and the Central Pacific were still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, next up is Mawa. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Biparjoy. Um, and that would end up being our 19th storm. We're probably going to get our next name storm in the Southwest Indian Ocean shortly. We have it designated as a storm, but the officials haven't yet named it. There will be an update pretty much as soon as this bulletin goes out from Meteo France, so who knows, we might have Fabienne by then. That's the next name, Jasper in the Australian region, and Lola in the South Pacific. That's all from us tonight. We'll be back on our live event in an hour. <laughs>